want to talk about a perspective of the abuser, of the narcissist, the psychopath, etc., that could be really dangerous for you, especially if you're in the early stage of healing. Why? Because it can keep you trapped in the cognitive dissonance and unable to break free from that. Or it could keep you having pity for the abuser, which will keep you either in that relationship or maybe you'll get out of that relationship and fall right into another. Now, this is a perspective that I hear promoted often in spiritual circles. In fact, it's a form of spiritual bypassing. I did a video on the spiritual narcissist and I addressed spiritual bypassing. I'll put that link up here in the corner if you want to check it out. Now, while this perspective may be true at one layer of reality, it's very dangerous for you, especially in the early stage when you're trying to get clear and away from the abuser and when you're trying to stay sober and not fall back into that addiction. Because this perspective will trick you into having empathy for the abuser. And when you have empathy for the abuser, you will lose yourself in the process. Now, this perspective will sound like things like, you just need to see the wounded inner child in them. Their inner child is begging for love. They had a bad childhood, so they're a victim too. No one ever really loved them. It's your job to heal and nurture their inner child because that's the mature thing to do. Now, maybe you're thinking, not only have you heard this from outside people when you tell them stories of the abuse, maybe your abuser even used those very same phrases. And you might notice that in your memories or if you're still looking at this person in real life, you might see flashes of their little inner boy or their little inner girl or even like a lost puppy. And those are really dangerous moments because that's when your empathy can be really connected to them. Your job is self-responsibility. It's not to rescue others. You can grow together, you can learn, you can inspire each other in relationships, but it's not your job to save anybody else. So what can you do if you've been hearing this perspective and it's like that perspective is starting to be integrated in your reality and you're trying to keep yourself away from that danger so you can get out of the cognitive dissonance and so you can keep yourself out of that abusive relationship and out of more abusive relationships in the future. Number one, relentlessly face the truth. This is how you break the cognitive dissonance. You face the truth over and over again by calling those behaviors abuse and describing that person as abusive. And remember, it is always a choice, a conscious choice for someone to abuse you. Number two, boundaries. Boundaries mentally, boundaries emotionally, because those emotional boundaries stop you from overindulging in empathy towards a person who's actively hurting you. Mental boundaries, meaning you're not gonna let these perspectives get in there and program your mind to have pity or empathy for the abuser. Use your rational mind. Understand that at one layer of reality, it's probably true that the abuser had a bad childhood. Sometimes not. Sometimes they were overindulged. Sometimes they were allowed to do whatever they wanted to do with no limits. Other times they suffered abuse. But you know what? Probably so did you. The majority of people listening to this message are gonna to relate to childhood experiences of abuse with either an abusive or a neglectful narcissist or alcoholic or some type of parent who was like this. And you didn't choose to become like this. Maybe you grew up with codependency patterns and now you're working on healing those people-pleasing behaviors, your self-abandonment behaviors. But that's very different than actively choosing to abuse someone. And the abuser that you're dealing with is an adult. So remind yourself, you are dealing with a grown ass adult who's making adult decisions to actively hurt and abuse you. Sometimes you'll hear that phrase, hurt people hurt other people. And yes, that's true, but that's not an excuse or a justification for people's abusive behavior. Number three, understand that no one gets a pass to abuse you. These perspectives of, you know, they're just, their inner child is just wounded, their inner child is seeking love, they just had a bad childhood. 
These perspectives are often used to justify familial abuse. Now, they can be used for your intimate partner, for a friend, for a work colleague, anything else, of course. But you'll most often hear this when you're trying to explain to people that a family member, particularly a parent of yours, is abusive. People will want to make excuses for them. No one gets a pass to abuse you. Really, that's just used to justify and minimize abuse. And you'll hear that a lot in spiritual groups, in religious organizations, by ignorant therapists, and also by trolls who will often comment on videos or posts that people like me make online. Number four, don't seek support from people who promote these perspectives because the only thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get re-traumatized. You're gonna further blame yourself when you've already taken on entirely too much responsibility and ownership of the problems in that relationship, no matter what kind of relationship that was in your life. And understand too that plenty of abusers use these perspectives as a pity ploy to gain your empathy. So, you know, down the road, when you're, say, in the third stage of healing, maybe even toward the end of the second stage of healing, at a certain point, you'll be able to see the bigger picture and understand why they did what they did, how they became who they became. Now, science doesn't entirely understand that. There's still a discrepancy between are people born like this and or is this part of their environment as they're growing up that makes them become abusive? We don't really know. I'm not sure that we ever will entirely know, but even if it is true in your case that your abuser had a bad childhood, remind yourself of these truths in the early stage of healing. It is so important that you understand that so you can break through that cognitive dissonance and stop yourself from going back for more. Down the road, when you're able to see the big picture without getting hooked back into that addiction, without wanting to connect again with the abuser because you feel bad for them or you feel empathy for them, that's when it's a good point that you can look at that and you can say, I can see why they became who they became. They had a really bad childhood. That's too bad. You know, but you also got to honor and understand the fact that you may have had a really bad childhood and you didn't turn out that way. You don't actively choose as an adult now to hurt other people just because someone else hurt you. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a like, leave me a comment below. If you want to share something with other people, maybe you heard this exact kind of perspective from someone. Maybe you heard a variation of it and you'd like to share that in the comments to help other people understand the different forms that this can take, how that affected you and how you helped yourself get out of there. That could be really helpful for someone else. I'm sending you a big hug.